Hello, I'm so glad you joined us today. I promise you won't be disappointed. You're watching the Marketplace Network. It's Prophetic Spotlight. I've got the who's who, the general himself, Woo. the apostle. I'm telling you, he came all the way down from Northern California to our uh, office in Orange County. I'm so pleased to have him. He's got a book coming out. He speaks all over the country. He's a street preacher. He speaks to all the, you people out there that have a church and want somebody to come in. You want them to evangelize. You want signs the one that is to move in. I tell you what, if you'll give me just 30 minutes, 30 means dedication to rule in Hebrew. Look it up for yourself. You give me 30 minutes today, the apostle will change your life right now. Who am I talking about? He goes by Scott Crawford. Thank you so much for having me, coming hey, on today. Thanks. God bless you, sir, for driving thanks all Thanks for life. having me down here. And all the time you put into this and all this. But I know you got a special day. You got me excited because you talked about before we went on, you said something about signs and wonders? Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, I believe in signs and wonders, but I also believe in signs that make you wonder. Ooh, okay. <laughs> Here's, for instance, one of the signs I have different shirts. I've been wearing these shirts for about 50 years. Wow. And I, I'm not a t-shirt guy. So, and I wanted to wear something maybe that had a little more class to it than a t-shirt. I was when I was younger, but I have these embroidered and I buy these shirts. I just find a nice shirt that I like that's plain and has a plain back. I take them to an embroidery place, a friend of mine, and cost me about $35 to get whatever I put on the back and on the front. And here's one of the things on the back. This says, you must be born, Jesus said you must be born again to enter the kingdom of God. Here's another one that says, uh, Jesus will return, will you be ready. Wow. That's that deep. says it right there, see? Amen. Not only did Jesus came the first time to bear our sins, but he's coming the second time, this time not to bear sins, but to gather together all those who are looking for his appearing. Are you looking for the appearing of Jesus? Oh or, my goodness. Or do you say, oh, I didn't, I didn't know Jesus was coming back. Yes. One of the last things he wow. said before he left earth to his uh, uh, disciples was, I'll be back. <laughs> we attribute that to Arnold Schwarzenegger, <laughs> I'll be back. <laughs> but uh, Jesus said it first. Amen. And I'll tell you what, Jesus will return. Will you be ready? And here's another one that says, you will find Jesus when you seek him with your whole heart. That's all you got to do. Call upon the name of the Lord and you will be saved. You've got to do it with your whole heart though, not sarcastically, not half-heartedly, but with your whole heart. Mm, good word. One of my, I don't ha have it here, but one of my uh, shirts that I get the most comments on uh, God gave me this phrase one time, and it says, uh, let's see, Jesus. Uh, Are you born again, that one? No, not, um, let's see, <laughs> slipped my mind now That's just, right. you can bring just for a second, but I'll, uh, I'll get it here in a second. Okay. I says, uh, Well, I'll think of it here in a minute. I'll yeah, come back to it. We'll come back. I want to let you know, right at the bottom of the uh, of our program here, there's a website, and if you want to go there, all these things that I'm talking about, and I'll put shirts and I'll put signs that I have made up, and signs that I've made up myself, sign boards, actually that I take out to the street. Sometimes I'll just go out the street, and while I'm not preaching or talking to someone, I hold a sign. And uh, one of those signs says, the purpose of life is to find Jesus. That's, a lot of people want to know, what is the purpose of life? Why am I here? What's it all about anyway? Teach it. 
That, no. that's, that's it right there. The, the purpose of your life, of everyone's life, is to come to Jesus before you go from the physical world to the eternal spiritual world. See, God created this earth. He's not happy with the way that we have done the things that we have done and that sin has covered the earth, but he sent his son to overcome sin and all of those who seek shelter and protection in Jesus. He is setting aside for a special place called the kingdom of heaven. Once this world was washed away with water, but now there's a promise every time you see a rainbow. The true purpose of the rainbow is not some sexual agenda, but it's to remind us that God will not flood the earth ever again. Wow. But this present earth is reserved for fire. Mm. In fact, a friend of mine, Winky Prattney, who's a true teacher of the Word of God, says, the language there is more perfectly spoken to be uncreated and recreated. God wow. is wow. has destined this whole world, the whole universe, not only the universe, but also the kingdom of heaven to be uncreated and recreated. Wow, that's deep. And a new heaven and a new earth wherein righteousness dwells. So you see, unrighteousness has dwelled and permeated the whole universe and even penetrated heaven as far as the devil and his angels, where a third of the angels, this is unbelievable to me, not only did Satan fall, but because he was over a third of the angels of heaven, they were deceived and followed him. That's mind-boggling to me. Right. How Amen. could you be in the presence of God? Uh -huh. Amen. And that's why he has eternally no forgiveness, because he was in the very presence of God. See, it's a, it's a protection to you that you can't see God. <laughs> because deep. if you could see God and still continued in your sin, then you would have eternal unforgiveness. Ooh, that's a good word, Like sir. Satan does. Mm. But that's why salvation is by faith, not of works, lest any man should boast. You can't work your way into the kingdom of heaven. You can't earn the kingdom of heaven. Wow. The gift of God is the kingdom of heaven. The gift of God is forgiveness. The gift of God goes even beyond that to something called grace. Grace is beyond forgiveness. Grace is beyond mercy. Wow, wow. Grace is the, some people describe it as the unmerited favor of God. Mm -hmm. Something we don't deserve, but God gives us mm -hmm. simply because we come to him in faith. Wow. That's why God doesn't require us to do something to be saved. He simply requires us to believe. Mm. Believe in your heart, confess with your mouth. Okay. That's faith. Call upon God. I even ask God. You're not sure, but ask him, reveal yourself to me. Mm. Begin to reveal to me Jesus. Wow. That's you can't good. come to God, the Bible says, except that God reveals himself to you. But God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to the knowledge of the truth. Mm. In the book of James, it says, God is not speaking to you. He's not speaking to you like some would to a child and say, get away from me, kid, you bother me. No, he never does that. He always opens himself up to those who genuinely call upon him. All you've got to do is, that's what I did. I genuinely sought God. God, if you're there, mm. I need to know it. I really do. I was at that moment in my life where I needed to know one way or the other. If you can't Thank do anything you. else, do that. You need to know. You need to come to a moment in your life, and you, you've, you've come there, but you just haven't confessed it. God, I need to know if you're really there, if there really is a heaven, if there really is a hell. 
because if there is, I know where I'm headed. That's where I was. I said, I know where I'm headed if there's a hell because I'd live my life for myself mm. and given in Egypt. to sin again and again and again and led others into sin. You see, sin Good causes word. you to self-destruct and, and it causes you to bring destruction to society all around you. That's why it's so bad. Wow. But God has a plan to bring us all into a new place called the kingdom of heaven wherein righteousness, not unrighteousness, dwells. Where all things are made new, where every tear is wiped away. Do you want to live in a place like that? Mm. Come to Jesus. Call upon the name of the Lord and you shall be set free, Amen. shall be yes, we want translated that. from the kingdom of this earth to the kingdom of heaven. Hallelujah. And that's our promise. We're talking spiritual things here, not physical things. Ask in the name of Jesus and you will see. Along the bottom of the screen here, there's a website. Many of the things that I've talked about and I'm putting up some other things there's different tools that you can use, even if you are too afraid to speak. You can hold a sign. You can wear something that talks about Jesus. I'm getting ready to create a shirt that has follow Jesus in multiple languages all over it. Wow. Follow Jesus That's in good. French, follow Jesus in uh every major language on the face of the earth. That's good. And it'll be a nice shirt and it'll be a classy shirt, not necessarily a t-shirt, but something that you'll be proud to wear, different styles of things. And I'll have that available on my, my site, uh, the website there. And there are many other things. All of the programs that were done here are on there, on that website. So if you want to go back and look at them or if you've missed programs, mm -hmm. you can go back and, and find them. Simply streetministrytraining.org, like it's on the bottom, streetministrytraining.org. How much simpler could it be? Yes. So get in and learn. Let let us, I don't know everything, and I'm not the big monkey muck that's going to teach you everything. God is the one who will teach you everything. To speak that, wow. And he has given me training, right, on the you. job training for, since 1970. Wow. And uh, so right now that's like 54, 55 years that's ago. That's correct. And... Uh, and I just learned OJT, on-the-job training. <laughs> and, uh, Good work. And, and I try to keep it simple because I'm a simple person and I'm not highly theological or highly doctrinal, although I have the, the main doctrine is God so loved the world, He gave His only begotten oh my Son, goodness, teach that, that whosoever believes in Him will not perish but That's have it. eternal life. That's it. That's the gospel. Mm -hmm. Keep it simple. That's what people need to know. They don't need to know uh, your theological position. Mm. Theology is a theory. Mm, that's good. I believe in actuality, not theology. Actuality is telling people about Jesus. Actuality is seeing people's lives transformed. Wow. On the way here today, I prayed with a person for transformation of their life. Amen. And they were transformed. Praise God. And it happened because they looked at something that was written on one of my shirts. And I said, do you know what that means? And they said, not really. And I said, well, and I took a few minutes to explain it. And then I said, I'd like to pray with you. And she prayed with me and her life was changed. I could see it. Mm tears in her eyes. I could see a transformation on her face. Teach it. Wow, that's good. Everybody that Jesus came in contact with was transformed. 
Call upon the name of Jesus and you will be transformed Amen. also. Amen. Amen. Call upon the name of Jesus and you will be transformed. Amen. Go to the website. There's many other things that are on there. I'm going to put a track on there that I did. I wrote a personal track. I wrote many pages of my testimony. I gave it to a friend of mine who cooked it down to about a, a hundred words or less and put it on a three page little track that you could stick in your pocket. And mm. it's been very, very effective. I'm getting ready to reprint that. And I've got the pages of that on there that, that shows what you can do with a personal testimony. If you can't speak it, write it out, ha have somebody help you edit it and put it on and, and you'll have somebody, something to hand people, just hand it out. That's good. I've handed out millions of tracks over a period of my life, literally millions. I have a famous track that has three hearts on it, a big heart, a smaller heart, and a smaller heart, and uh, known as the heart track. We, it was originally in a size that you couldn't put in your pocket. We re-edited it down so you could stick it in your pocket. And we've handed out not only myself, but others, literally millions and millions of those tracks over the last five decades or so. Wow, that's a so, lot. So there's a lot of ways that you can witness for Jesus. There's a lot of things that you can do. Mm -hmm. Just keep making Jesus visible. The world needs to know. Some people are saying, Christianity is fading away, but no, mm. I see awakening happening all over the nation. That's good. Speak it. I have a friend named Cindy Smock that preaches on college campuses. She preached with her husband over the last five decades. Mm. He passed away, but she had become famous on one of the social media sites and she's so famous now, all she's got to do is say she's going to a campus mm. and a hundred to a thousand people will show up wow. waiting for her. And her main message is, <laughs> she's kind of a, what you might call a quirky individual so, and she has a unique way of saying and doing things. And, and she preaches and, and passes out a track called, Be a Whole No Mo <laughs> on college <laughs> campus. And wow. BA. Ho, no, mo, That's and so basically good. is transforming uh, a lot of women on campuses, on campuses that are uh, loose with their sexual activity and fornication, and causing them to be a ho, no, mo. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Look her up. Just Google Cindy Smock, and you'll you'll see who I'm talking about. But. That's good. Each person has a unique way, and somebody will listen to you that won't listen to me. That's good. You are unique, and your Very message unique. and your way, you might stutter and stammer when you first try to talk to people, but they'll listen to you because you stutter and stammer. And they might turn me away because I'm more skilled in my communication. They'll think, that guy's just too slick, you know. Now, I try to just be relatable to people and talk to them right where they live and, and simplify things because I'm a simple person and I don't understand the complicated things. I don't understand fully the Trinity. A lot of people say, well, you've got to have the right view of the Trinity, but no, you don't. <laughs> That's, That's not a requirement. Good word, preacher. What you've got to do is call upon the name of the Lord, and you shall be saved. If you haven't done that, I want you to do that right now. Please call do. upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And you haven't said anything until you've said the name of Jesus. That's good right there. His name is above every name. Right now in this time, because Jesus went to the cross, shed his blood so that you might not have to shed your own oh, blood for good. your own Teach sin. That. That's good suffered so that you might not have to suffer for your own sins. Mm -hmm. All you've got to do is call upon his name, but you've got to call upon the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. 
and do it in your own language. You don't have to do it in some other language. I mean, <laughs> a lot of people are saying you've got to speak the proper name of Teach Jesus that, in yes. Hebrew. No, you don't. In fact, people won't even know who you're talking about if you talk about the Jewish uh, name of Jesus. Mm, if you're deep. French, you speak whatever the name of Jesus sounds like in French. That's good. You want to mm. speak the name of Jesus in Chinese, and you speak it in Chinese. Praise God. It's the name of Jesus that's above every name. Call upon that name of Jesus. It's mm -hmm. a transforming name. When you speak, even, even before I came to know the Lord, sometimes in my life, I once almost passed away. I was dying, and I, all I saw was big, fiery doors that from bottom to top, they were opening up to receive me, and I somehow remembered from Sunday school or something in my upbringing from my parents, and I just said, Jesus, Jesus. Mm. And somehow I came back from that. One of my friends that was in the room with me, mm. I uh, said, man, you look like you were dying. I said, I think I was. But God brought me back. Mm. And uh, by His grace and mercy, kept me alive until I had enough common sense to call upon Jesus. Amen. Amen. Intellectualism will cause you to look down at your nose like a guy that was talking to me one time and I was telling him about Jesus, and I said, what do you think about that? And he says, literally, look down his nose to me. I mean, I was six foot one at the time. This guy was probably six five. He literally looked down his nose to me and said, a bit simplistic, I think. A <laughs> bit simplistic, I think. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, it's simple. Mm -hmm. It's common sense. Amen. If you have been educated, so so to speak, educated to doubt the existence of God because that's what's happened, you've been indoctrinated away from God, I urge you right now, look around you. Look at the stars. Look at, the, look at nature. Everything speaks of God. Everything that God creates revives itself, replenishes itself. He said, multiply and, and inhabit the earth. Every animal can, is built with the ability to multiply itself. Every mm -hmm. thing that God does, all of nature replenishes itself through the seasons. It dies and is resurrected again and again and again, unendingly. It doesn't die and stay dead unless you uproot it. So don't be uprooted from God. Be planted in God through Jesus Christ, and you will be constantly renewed until you enter into the kingdom of heaven amen where you can amen. die no more. I hate to cut this off. It's yes. because of time. Please forgive me. But he, I thought the apostle made an incredible discovery. He said, a ho no more. Think about it. Every time a man enters a woman, every curse, every disease, generational curses, all the women he's been with comes into you. So be careful with that. It's called witty invention and godly ideas. You can get those ideas for yourself to protect yourself and protect others and to come to Christ. Now, I call him apostle. You might call him general. Think about it for a second. In Matthew, Jesus said to the centenary, he goes, I'm a man under authority. We should be the same way. I believe he's a general in the spirit. We should be under the authority that he is under Christ. When he speaks the word, we should say yes and amen, because that's, he's looking after you. He doesn't have to come all the way out here. He doesn't have to spend all this time and money. He doesn't have to write this book. He doesn't have to tour the country. He doesn't have to go around the world helping others learn who Christ is, but he does. Why does he do it for you? But now you can help him. 
I'm urging you to sow a seed. It's right there on the bottom of the screen. Do it by sale. There's all these different ways on his website how to sow. And I'd get that green shirt. It means growth. It also means money, by the way. But whatever shirt you decide, I'd pay double for it. Why? The double anointing. Show the apostle that you're with him. Show that you'll sow consistently. It'll help him with his ministry to travel around. Show him that you agree with what he's saying. He's making it simplistic for you. Show him that you want him to co-labor to keep doing the programs because it's very expensive to be on TV. You might want to sow 25 consistently a month, 50, 100, whatever it is. I know there's businessmen out. You know what? There's business people out there that can sow one tight seed for 1,000 or 5,000. Mark my words, you can't do that business deal anyway. What's the difference? So, and watch the fruit that comes from this man. It says in Luke 7.35 that I will agree with the wisdom by the fruit of my life of what you've given me. So by the fruit that he's doing through his life, God is showing his wisdom and you need to receive it. So I'm asking you to so go to his website. He'll come back on next week. But until next time, you've seen the apostle. I know you, I call him apostle. You'll call him general, but he goes by Scott. Scott Crawford, I'm Dr. Ken, and I'll see you next time on Prophetic Spotlight.